color this design, I will be using um, blue, green, and teal in the middle. So I'm going to start off with uh, maybe the light blue, which I have those blues planned there, and then I'll kind of continue from there. So starting off, I'm going to grab some of that light blue and put it on my mixing plate. In this case, I'm just using a disposable paper. And adding some water. Make sure that you change your water, right? Like in the previous video, you saw me working on two designs at the same time. And most likely you guys end up doing the same thing because you want to wait in between. So when that part is dry, Kind of going back and forth and doing that both of my waters were pretty uh, unclean so make sure that you change and grab some new water okay so starting off with that blue i'm making it pretty light the light source we decided it's going to be on top right in the middle so i'm going to shade either side kind of coming down So very simple, not making it any complicated. I'll just put a wash on that side and it's fairly um, light. So there aren't a lot of pigment in my brush. I added a lot of water to this. So just simply drawing two lines and I'm going to add even a little more water to it as I'm coming to the front. So I'm grabbing more water to show you. You see, I have even less pigment now. And with that, I'll just make some more marks and these are gonna be even lighter, right on the edge. So I kind of make the edge blend in, smooth it out. There you go. So if you want to keep it at that light, you're good. But if you want to add more shadows to this, this is the time to add that. I think I will add a little bit darker tone. In order to do that, I'll just grab heavier pigment, right? So I'm not changing the color, same blue, just have more pigment on my brush. And as you can see, as soon as I apply that with my brush, it's going to spread out because it was pretty wet. And just let it spread out naturally. There you go, so that's for that. Now, if you want to, I mean, I'm going to have the lower part and the upper part in green. So for shading this blue, I'm going to use my green and that will create some kind of teal in the middle, right? So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that. And you add a little bit of blue and that is going to be my shade, like a darker shade for the same blue. You don't have to do this. These are my color choices for this specific design. You could, um, if you want to darken the blue, you could go with the darker blue. You could add black, kind of gradually moving towards navy and eventually black. I like to keep it uh, a little colorful and I usually stay away from using a lot of black unless for the outlining. Now right here, I'm going to see some shadow under the bust line. So I will apply that right now with this color, which is my dark shade. And I'm mixing a little bit more of blue
There you go. Each design will be different, right? Like in this case, it's a simple dress. Really, there's not much happening. It's just solid. Um, and I am bringing that shadow in to both of my sides. I could have not add the green and just deepen the color with adding more blue and black. But I thought it might be a good idea for you see, to see that you can actually use a neighboring color to darkening your colors, not necessarily shading it with black. I'll just add a little touch of that at the top here. There you go. I don't have a lot of control because of the setting of my camera. This is not exactly in front of me. It's a little further out, but I guess that's all right. You get to see the technique. Make sure the way you're arranging your sitting, you have a lot of control. So technically the paper should be much closer to me and I almost lean over, well, not bending, my back should remain straight, but you know, right now it's pretty far out from where I'm sitting. So that is a little um, uncomfortable. There you go. So I've got that part going. Now I'm going to use a lot of water, lightening up my color, current color, and I would blend that edge. So in order to do that, I'll just grab some more water, pretty light. You know, you could always test and see if you're happy with your color. I think I'm happy with my color. That's all good. And now I'm going to go on the edge of that heavy paint and kind of blend that in. In a way, because it's also transparent, I'm making a new mark here. So these are like layered. If you really want to do the whole layering technique, you might want to wait until this layer is completely dry and then you go back with a different layer. But that's a whole different technique. It should be good for now. Now, one thing I'm noticing right now is that it looks like the tummy is getting kind of round and big and I don't want that. I want this to remain flat, right? So maybe I need to darken that area. So what I'll do, I'll just bring down my shadows a little more. That's a little better. And adding a little bit more water, kind of blending that area, keeping, don't forget that we need to keep some of that white, right? So I'm not covering that whole white. I will keep a little bit of that. And sometimes if you are using heavy paint, what you can do is to comfortably go ahead and paint the entire thing the color you want and you would go back with heavy white paint and then you create those lights after. So that's also a different technique. I think I'm good now. I just need this to become a little darker. So what I will do now is time to add a little bit of black to create that shadow. I grab a touch of black. And I will just mix it with my previous colors, hoping to get a good dark color. Let's give it a try and see if that works. It's okay, but it's not dark enough. I'm gonna need it to be a little darker. So I would need a little bit more black. Okay, that is pretty dark, <clears throat> but I think that should be all right. Let's try that one. 
yeah that's good I like that so I'm gonna use a little bit of that just in the area that I think it's going to cast shadow and be careful not to apply a lot of that because that can just destroy your whole work so far you want a little bit not much right and then I will clean up my brush with clear water I gently go over the edge and try to get rid of that harsh line and kind of blend it in you need to do this when this is wet because as I mentioned earlier acrylic dries and then when it dries out it looks like plastic and you can't really change it but if you were using gouache which is pretty much an opaque watercolor so it's like watercolor in terms of like when it dries you could add water and remix but it's opaque it's heavy the look of uh, or the feel of gouache is just like your acrylic paint the difference is that this dries out and once it's dry you could not blend anything with it but in gouache and watercolor if even though if it's dry you could always add more water and start working with that I'm going to add a little bit of that shadow right there now this part upper part is already dry so I don't have a lot of movement in terms of mixing in a way I'm showing you a different technique too so this is dry and this is wet on dry right so because it's acrylic and it's fully dried I can't really blend that but it has that transparency quality that's one of the beauty of acrylic paint it has the transparency so you can go ahead and layer it with a lighter like this is almost uh, almost just water with a tint so I can create that effect all right I think we are good to Go and kind of move on from this stage okay so next you're gonna kind of look and plan what you want to do after so I think next we can do those two areas uh, the strap and the shear behind the arms we could also do the skirt part but this is pretty wet and I'm afraid that if I work in this upper part I may mess it up I rather to work in the lower part wait until that's dry and then I'll get back to that all right continuing with the lower part I will sort of continue the same theme of blue and green teal now we already have uh, the legs and this is going to be transparent so we want to show that this is a sheer fabric and you can see through it uh, keeping that in mind everything you mix is going to be pretty transparent so I'm gonna start with the blue adding a lot of water right you don't want it to be opaque you don't want to cover the legs that's not our intention here is when you can think about rendering different material. Here, this is a sheer, a transparent fabric versus in the previous video, what we did here is a very opaque, heavy material like a satin. You could also use the same technique as a base for making a velvet. And then on top of that, you go back with a pencil crayon and crosshatch using white or different colors based on your design. Um, maybe I either record a different video for that or I turn a section of this to velvet to create that rendering All right, so my water is pretty translucent you see and you want to use your bigger brush and I want to consider all those lights as we talked about so the lights is in the center I'm going to keep 
this side light and kind of so say from center out it's going to be white lighter color like darker color all the way to really dark so keeping that in mind i will start putting my first wash and again because i'm right-handed i rather to start from left to right if you're left-handed you might want to work in the opposite direction okay so i know that this area is going to be dark because it's right on my side right so i'll go ahead and make that whole area wet leaving a little bit of white I would repeat that for all of those folds. And because I have lots of water and this is watercolor paper, I should be I should be good. You know, you don't want to rush too much because you're applying a lot of water and hopefully it doesn't dry out quickly. And as you can see, I'm going over the legs but the legs are still showing and that's how you get that transparency done after this we will continue applying all the shades as usual um, you know how we did the previous demos if you're gonna continue doing that for now I'm trying to be quick <laughs> so maybe I stop talking for a second There you go, this is my last panel. And right away, I would start jumping to the shadows. Looks like this side is getting dry, so I gotta work really fast. I could have just completed one side and then moved on to the second side, but I guess I didn't. So. Here I'm going to mix a little darker tone. I use that green and more of the blue. And I have more pigment, pretty much. That's the main difference, right? It's a little heavier. Now I'm gonna grab more blue, more green. I think this should be fine, but let's give it a try. All right. Yes, it's a still wet, so that's good. I can still see some movement. Quickly moving to the right hand side, I'm going to apply this second shade. I think I have too much water here. So as you can see, it's spreading out, but it's all right. They're all going to go into the same place at the top. and. You don't want to make this really dark because if you go really dark, you can cover the skin. And so you just want to keep it as light as possible, but also applying your shadows. That is a little tricky, um, but if you practice enough, you get there. I feel I have too much water happening here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come to rescue. I'm going to lift up some of those extra water. And basically by lifting it up using my brush. And there you go. Should be good now.
And in fact, right now what I'm doing, I'm lifting even more paint and it shows that it's transparent, right? It all makes sense when we come to the end of the video. For now, I'll just um, trust in the process pretty much. All right, so I've got all of those and I'm gonna add more green. See if that green is still available. No, nope, that's dry. So grab some more color if you need to. And then we're gonna do the last shadow or maybe actually we need, this is the second last because I would have to use a little bit of black to make it like the top part. But the difference between this and previous stage is that everything is very watery, right? I'm not having a lot of pigment. I'm supposed to um, stay with less pigment, but getting to that dark shade. I hope that makes sense to you guys. All right, let's see if that's a good shade. Again, I would apply it only to the side that is going to be dark. Yes, it is working, so I'm quite happy with that. Applying a lot of pressure as I go to the top, I lift up so my line become lighter or skinnier. So wider and lighter line. There we go. Now another technique, if this was a watercolor painting and I was gonna apply a lot of water, which accidentally here, I do have a lot of water. I hope this is captured by the video. What is happening is that my paper is not flat anymore. It's kind of coming up. To prevent that, um, if you're doing a lot of like wet on wet, what you want to do is to tape all four corners of your uh, watercolor paper to your table or to the board that you're using. And when you're done, you don't want to remove it. You need to let it stay until it completely dry. And when it dries, it will go back to flat. The tape will hold it down and it goes back to flat. I don't have to tape now, so I have a higher chance of not having a flat finish design after this is done. All right, now let's add a little bit of darker color, which also that dried. So I'm gonna add a little bit of black to that base color I had here. That's pretty black, so that was a lot of black. I will not be happy with that, so it's okay. Wash your brush and start over. Here, this should be good. I think that will do for the shadow. There you go. Sometimes it's a good idea, like if the detail are so little, like this design I'm working on, it's a good idea to wait in between your um, layers. Otherwise they kind of run into each other. You know how I had that part all dried out before I went back for the shades? Uh, I'm considering that that was a better method because uh, I guess subconsciously I did that because I know that was a smaller area versus this larger area, which I easily could do wet and wet. When your areas are smaller like that, or these guys, it's a good idea to do maybe two layers of your shade and then stop, let it dry. Then you go back with layering method. Now I see that these colors are kind of running into each other and I'm not so happy about that. So while this is wet, I have a chance to rescue that. See if I can do that. You could either use your paintbrush 
to lift up some of those pigments or you could use a q-tip and let's see if I can use any of them actually nope that's pretty dark and it's deciding to stay and that's all right I could when I do the final outline I could always fix that by applying my border in black and applying some white in fact so the white at the bottom are all there so that's good here I could have I guess I was rushing to finish up their video but I should have waited like that technique kind of let it dry go back and that way I would not uh, hide all of my whites okay so that's almost good